to my master class for Victor Polish Advanced Studies for the clarinet. To everyone who has watched this series since day one, thank you for your support, for tuning in each week. It's been equally fun, hectic, rewarding, and crazy to film all these uh, the past few months. Learned a lot, and I hope that you have too. Uh, getting into this final etude, we are going to be working within common time, E flat major, and this is very similar to what we did in A223 in terms of the Bach styling. I think that there's a lot of similarities between the styling, even though there's not a specific composer marked that this A2 is based off of. Um, we're going to be playing this at Allegro Moderato. Again, quarter equals 100 or so. Um, nothing too crazy. What we're really trying to focus on today is the quality of our hand position, the movement between the notes, and these uh, wide intervals that separate commonly played patterns that we come to know in a lot of our music. Uh, I find that this etude is deceptively hard because it pairs, uh, again, really common patterns, um, stacked thirds, broken thirds, scales, with uh, wide leaps that can sometimes throw us off. So the more that you, the more time that you spend early on with this, the easier it will be. Um, as I said, if you want more structure on how to play this in depth, we covered a Bach etude number 23 a few weeks ago, and then the first etude was also a Bach etude if you want to go there for styling. Again, I don't think that this is necessarily Bach etude, but I think that it does have a lot of similarities that you can pull from. Now, like A223 and others written in this particular key center, E flat major, I think one of the most challenging aspects of this A2 is going to be the technical fluency that must be achieved to create a very smooth technique through this. Uh, outlined by a series of scalar intervallic sequences, this A2 again is deceivingly tricky um, because it's technique, but super rewarding to play if you can figure it out. Uh, like every new A2 or project, start by setting your metronome to a tempo that allows you to play every note correctly, with all expressive markings, dynamics. Um, by playing this study at a slow tempo, you will also be able to understand the technical demands and nuances much better than just running it at an arbitrary speed. Uh, while this etude is based on a familiar pattern, also keep in, mind that, keep, keep in mind that we are dealing with many moments that deviate from the standard scales and arpeggios that we might already be playing. So going slowly through this will help you prevent any mistakes that could be made from running this over and over again. Uh, and when I say that, I mean we have a lot of similar patterns, uh, scales, arpeggios, broken thirds, but then they're separated by a wider interval that might throw us off. So this is really a exercise in hand position, finger motion, intervallic consistency. Um, e flat major is a little bit more tricky because we have a lot more left to right motion between the C and the E flat key. So all these things in mind, this does present some challenges even though it may look simple on the page compared to the 27th A2. Now jumping right in, let's get started with this first phrase and see how we can apply these general concepts to the rest of the A2. Uh, throughout, we essentially have the same mode of traveling through a variety of sequences for each quarter note that begins each phrase. Uh, play it with full value, but more as a bell tone. This is just my suggestion. I find that just playing at full value and then right into the 16 notes makes it sound a little more technical, more just like a warm up exercise. So, we're really trying to create some music with these simple patterns that we've come to know. Uh, in the measure and all instances ahead where we have intervals of a perfect fourth, be sure to bring out the lower notes that are outlining the melody using a bit more air in each to emphasize the line without actually using articulated accent. Uh, moving just ahead to measures 11, E2, we now have a passage of arpeggios that are linked by an interval of a minor second. For a little more variation, I might try adding a slight tenuto at the top of each arpeggio grouping so that the beginning of the descending portion outlines the stepwise motion across the entire phrase. At measure 20, we begin a passage of descending perfect fourth intervals. Now, as discussed in A212, way back when, for these large intervals that require the use of multiple fingers moving at once, I would use a mirror to critique my hand position and prioritize making small, unified movements that are supported by strong, focused, fast air. Um, especially for the middle register of the clarinet, we need to use more air pressure always to balance out the resistance that's found here, especially when going between registers that are below or above. Those tend to be a little bit less resistant, so practicing slowly will definitely allow you to understand your clarinet's tendencies so that you're able to anticipate moments like this in the music. 
At measure 40, we have now reached the final phrase of this etude, starting at measure 42. Begin this crescendo gradually and place more emphasis on the beginning of each slurred grouping to add intensity to the line. Uh, for the final two bars, I would suggest adding just a small ritardando, maybe a fermata to the final note to add a bit more finality to this final note of the book. Um, it almost seems fitting to make this as fun and as expressive as you like, considering that there's really not much marked, and it is the last etude in the book. And with that, we have reached the end of Victor Palachek's event studies for the clarinet. Having reached the end of this masterclass series, I hope that you've gained some knowledge that helps you prepare this A2 book for many years of practice, performances, and the opportunity to also maybe teach these A2s to someone else down the road. Uh, in case you have any additional questions on this A2 book, as always, please feel free to comment below or send me an email. In the meantime, thank you so much for clicking today, and I'll see you next time for another video on this channel. Stay safe and take care.